In this video, we'll look at more framing and staging, making sure that the characters and the cameras are positioned well so we can animate to the camera. From the last video, we have our establishing shot, starting looking out the window and panning left and dollying back to reveal the conversation by the two ecos. I'll make a new camera, turning off my res gate for a sec, and choosing Create, Cameras, Camera. This will be a free camera rotating to the right to look out the window as one of the echoes looks over and gestures out. As always with the camera, I'll go down to the shape node in the object display and make the locator scale bigger so I can find it. Then I'll get this camera in place. I'll go in a front view and a wireframe temporarily and move this camera up. This is just going to spin or turn to the right. I'll get the camera in place, rotate it over, and check the camera and see how it looks. It's not bad, although it's a little close. I'd like to pull back here and go with more of a medium shot, which is usually defined as maybe torso up, or in their case, because they're a little short, we're looking at hips up. And I want to think about the framing. For this one, I'd like to start out with one of them facing away, one of us is facing towards the other character, but talking to us as well. He's going to look to the left, his left, and point his arm to the left, and we will pan to screen right and see what he's pointing to. We can have cameras overlap. This means that over one animation, we can have multiple cameras on the same timeline viewing at different segments, rendering different frames, so that we can capture one piece of action twice from different views and help tell our story. What I'll do is I'll start animating this guy turning as the other camera is coming in, the establishing shot. Then we'll cut on that action, the character's still moving, to reveal him finishing the turn and looking out the window. That way we're not waiting for the characters to do something, letting them do something, and switching to the next camera. It gets very boring to stop that way. I want to think of framing for overlapping action. I'll also look at the lens. Right now the default focal length is 35. I'm going to put it at a 50 so we go in a little tighter and flatten out the depth and then pull it back. With the focal length set at 50 I'm ready to animate the camera. I want to give myself some more frames. Notice how I don't work on my entire timeline at once. I just put in 240 frames or 10 seconds and right now the playback animation goes from 1 to 96. I'm going to change this. I'll assume that in the first shot from about frame 72 we start to see him turn as we dolly in. For this shot his motion will already be underway and this camera I'm going to have start from 96 to 144. We can constrain down the range we're seeing so it plays back only what we need and having the cameras overlap on the animation. Now I'm ready to animate. I'll select the camera and with the camera selected, I'm going to key the movement and rotation first by making sure I'm at the right frame, 96, and pressing Shift-W and Shift-E, keying move and rotate. I'll scrub over to 144 and orbit to the right, making sure that as I pan, I hold Shift and constrain on the longest direction. That's kind of a nice shot. We're looking at an over-the-shoulder and seeing something outside we can focus in on. I'll key that, pressing Shift-W and Shift-E again. Let's check out this animation. We start to see them talk. At 72, he'll start to turn, and by maybe 120 or 144, he'll be all turned to point out what's going on out here to the other fellow. And we orbit around, over the shoulder, and our eye is guided out from him to the outside. It's also a great place in post to do a rack focus from close depth to far. The last thing to check are the tangents. I want to make sure that this is a nice slow motion. If I hit play, it looks pretty good, although I may want to slow down the beginning a little bit. I'll do this in the graph editor. I'll choose Window, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. On the camera, I've got different things animating. I'll frame all in the graph editor to make sure I'm seeing everything correctly. Any property that's selected is shown here. By hitting frame all, I can see all of my curves. I'll look first at the translation. 
fairly small on the x, fairly small on the y, and a little bit on the z. I'm going to leave the easing intact here. On the rotation, no rotate x, little rotate y, and no rotate z. So I'll start with the y rotation. What I'd like to do is just elongate that handle a little bit to make the start a little slower on the rotation. The first thing I'll do then is to free the tangent weights. That lets me take this handle and with the mouse wheel click and drag and elongate that out making sure it doesn't go too far above horizontal and give it a slower start in the rotation. I'll go back and check it again. Not bad. Maybe just a little work on the movement, but we can keep finessing it. Notice how every time I make a change and I check it, and I make a change and I check it. It's an iterative process, and I want to think forward in terms of depth of field and other post effects. Where am I focusing as I'm animating the camera? I want to make sure that I've got a good separation between foreground and background. The eco are clearly pulled away from their background by their framing. This column will be blurred nicely around his head, so I'm not too worried about that line. They're framed fairly full in the frame in a medium shot putting us in or viewing the conversation, but not talking with one of them in particular, as we would in a close. I'm ready to keep going with the camera animation, and also to get into the character animation, now that my cameras are set.